My name is Oscar, and I'm here on behalf of Daniel Hansom from Verifiter. Uh, as you can see the picture, that's actually my great-great-grandfather. He was also a dedicated bug finder. Uh, so, uh, and we've ha heard a lot of discussions about how to run test suites faster and so on, but what I'm interested in is what we can do, what kind of an analysis we can do before we run the test suites. So uh, together with Verifiter, uh, I'm sorry, yes. So the, the point of this is before running the test suites, what, what can we figure out? And uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to classify the commits that have come in to, uh, to uh, maybe narrow down our test suites on what's high-risk commits and uh, run the longer test suites on those and uh, maybe run shorter test suites on what I think is uh, deemed low-risk, of course. So uh, the good thing about Verifiter is that uh, Daniel has uh, implemented a cool uh, debugging tool that it uh, extracts the, it does an, uh, a code repair. So uh, when you have a failed test, uh, it goes back and checks what created the failed test. It removes that commit perhaps. And that has uh, allowed me to uh, have access to very good data when it comes to wh which commits introduce bugs. So uh, I've heard uh, there are other methods, of course, of uh, trying to figure out uh, where a bug was introduced. But I have some pretty good data. I'm happy to uh, work with Verifiter because uh, it's an interesting problem. And those of you that know about machine learning, uh, you want to have sort of a balanced data set. Uh, in my case, I don't have that many bugs, but I have a whole lot of commits. So. Uh, I'm met with a lot of problems, but it's fun to see where this goes. Uh, so uh, when uh, Pindown sets up for a new project or something, uh, we look at revision history, code and logs and so on. We try to get everything we can, but of course we don't have the Pindown generated bugs yet. So uh, we can set up without this. Uh, we have around 100 features that we look at as you can imagine, there's no single strong predictor of what a uh, bad commit is, because if there would have been, then we wouldn't need to run all the tests. <laughs> uh, so we use a combination, and uh, I would like to talk about some of the features that we have. One can be as simple as commit time. We've noticed that around certain times of the day, there is a higher percentage of commits that uh, introduce bugs than other times. We can see here that around three or four o'clock, uh, that's high risk, probably because people want to go home. Uh, and uh, right before lunch, or uh, uh, not during, maybe they have late lunch, yeah. I think Daniel mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> this is real uh, data from uh, one of their customers. So uh, we can see here that when people go home, there are no bad commits. Of course, in the morning, it's low risk because then you're probably finished with what you were doing li late last evening, so just commit whatever is finished. Uh, there are also some more, uh, what would you say, esoteric uh, uh, features that we have, sort of change coupling. Uh, so in a revision control system, you can see which commits are uh, uh, committed together whereas they might not have a logical connection, but uh, in Git you or uh, Perforce you can find out. And we've noticed that if, uh, in some cases, of course, not all, uh, when a file is updated together with m a lot of them, and then suddenly it's not, then you can kind of look at other parameters as well to identify if it was a high-risk commit or not. Uh, there are also some uh, very illogical uh, features that we have. Uh, I didn't include them in the slides because I wasn't sure how long I was going to talk. Uh, but for example, uh, comment ratio in the code. You would expect well-documented uh, code to contain less bugs, but what turned out to be the truth was that uh, uncommented code could often be uh, auto-generated code, like XML or stuff like that, so it didn't contain any faults at all. Whereas uh, more commented could be, uh, well, of course, a developer produced. Let's see. And some results that we have. We've been trying to get the precision up. It's, it's a difficult problem. It's an imbalanced data set. And there's huge overlap between the bug, non-bugs. So uh, with the precision around 41% for certain data sets, 
you can start to use this data because uh, at the top six high-risk commits that we look at, you can be fairly certain that at least one of them, or 96% of them, contain a bug. So uh, this could really help the industry in the future. And please swing by and listen to me. I'm done for now. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. Thank you.